Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Porky here. You know, don't you? You know. That's why you're watching. Right. Got a few things down here. Just going to do a. Uh, just going to do a quick video. Uh, before I go into office, right. Eddie Earn and Kel Brook. Hmm. We've got divorced, haven't we? This is what happens in boxing. This is what happens. Whose side am I on? None of them, really. They both deserved each other at the time, didn't they? Um, Kel must have thought it was going to last forever, but... Eddie Hearn's got a duty of care to about 60 fighters, hasn't he? You know, and 62 shows a year, so, you know, he's got a lot on his plate, hasn't he? It's all come out now about Kel Brook living badly. We all know what that means, don't we? Uh, not training properly, going out partying and this and that. That's the rumours. Uh, Kel's even admitted it himself that he'd never really trained properly. Um, Eddie's come out and he said that Dominic Ingalls saved his career on more than once, just like him. I don't think it's good to air your linen, linen in pub, dirty linen in public. Uh, my own opinion is this, right? Kel Brooks' stepdad doesn't know what he's doing. The mess Frank Warren around, they were knocking fights back left right and centre. I'm not going to go into it. I know we've mentioned it many times on here. You're only as good as your manager, aren't you, when you're a fighter? Or the people that advise you. For example, Liverpool couldn't do what they do without a backroom team, Klopp and all the other people. Kel Brook couldn't do what he does. We are his trainer, his manager. And Eddie Earn. Now, if there's a break in the chain and somebody's advising somebody wrong, it's like having a rotten apple in it in a dressing room as a footballer. You get rid of rotten apples because before you know where you are, they make all other apples go rotten or they make a couple go rotten. You might have a striker in a football team and he's upsetting apple cart like that L had you do for it, Liverpool. He might influence other people then a defender or a goalie before you know where you are. Not everybody's pulling it in the right direction. Kelbrook were badly advised for a long time. Go through his record. What is he, 39 and 2? Something like that. Uh, who's his best win? Sean Porter. In a fight that he squeaked by Porter. Squeaked by we had raised a thin win, and I thought he lost myself. I'm glad he did, because he, he was in my bet that night. But what else has he really, really done? He's avoided a lot of people. But when they come with the money, they went running in, didn't they? Yes, please, because greed reaches, reaches inside you, reaches into the core of a person. And they knew if they got beat against Gorkin, they had the Errol Spence fight. Greed. Yeah, another pay-per-view. After that, they were basically done, wasn't he? And Eddie Earn, I don't think, went out to bat for him. They might have tried to make odd fight either and everywhere, but I think the writing were on the wall between them two after the Errol Spence fight. After the Errol Spence fight, I think the writing was on the wall. But the father, or stepfather, he's got to take responsibility. Dominic Ingalls has got to take responsibility. And, uh, and Eddie Earn has, because somewhere along the line, Kel Brook, I think, didn't know really who to turn to. He went, he went and asked Dennis's head trainer, John Fuchs, at Dennis's gym, Fight Academy, will you train me? And John's not, not, not going to knock that back. They had a win over, and when you look back at that win now, that was a fantastic win, wasn't it? When you look what's gone on since. But he got people in his ear. 
And I don't think he's been allowed to make a decision himself. That's what I think. I don't think he's been allowed to make a decision for himself. That interview he did on IFL, I think Eddie might be right. I think other people might be in Kell Brooks here. They might be in his ear hole and... I was going to say something else then, but somebody's in his ear hole pulling his strings because he's not smart enough, Kell Brook, to be articulate. And I think that he's been manipulated by the father. If that's not true, Terry, come on, Porky's Corner. You've made horrific, horrific decisions regarding your stepson, Kell Brook. Whether it's for financial gain or what, I don't know. I don't care. But what I do care about is boxing. And I were a Kelbrook fan. But I think the father's got to be to blame. And everybody else has played their little part in it. All human errors through greed. Eddie earned through greed with Golovkin fight because he wanted to see the show. Kelbrook through greed because he wanted a payday. And, and he knew he still had his other payday at, at £147. Dominic Kingle, because he wanted his slice at cake. And father, manager, stepfather, manager. So he wanted his slice at cake. Now, I've actually seen all the correspondence for the offer that Asif Valley and Dennis put to Kelbrook. Now, Kelbrook knocked £2.8 million back. His argument was, I'm here, I'm here calm, we're getting four point one. Amir Khan's beat, was it 10, 11 world champions? What was it, what happens Kel Brook beat? Three or four? So bottom line is, Amir Khan, what bigger name? But they couldn't act that. They, they couldn't get their heads around that. And I think after that, I think Eddie Earn must have thought, do you know what? I'm going around in circles here. I'm going around in circles. And that's just how it goes, isn't it? And it's all come home to roost now, hasn't it, Bobby? Were Eddie Earn right to put plug on him? No. I don't think you were right to put plug on having that fight on Sky because Kel's been with Sky years, hasn't he? So, no, I don't, I don't think... When you've been with Sky nine years... Nine, it's, it's over nine years, isn't it? I don't think it were right to pull the plug on having the fans... Miss out on Brooke Crawford now, but Eddie Yearn's sending a message out to the rest of them. If you work with other people, you're down the road. You're trying to show authority. Do I feel for Kel Brook? Yeah, I feel for him because he's going to get smashed to pieces against Crawford, isn't he? And it is a cash out, but I want him to win. But it's a cash out and it's like human error. You know the Titanic? It didn't, it didn't just sink because... Some guy were in bird's nest at top uh, uh, top at boat looking with didn't have looking for icebergs. He weren't paying attention. He never had the binoculars, and there were like a mist in air, weren't there? The rivets were all different on on Titanic. Look, you can watch programs about it. Human error. Everybody played the little part in it, and everybody's played their part with Kel Brook with the human error. Kel with his bad living, and. Not being 100% committed in training. Dominic Ingle, he'll have played his part as well. Father, or stepfather, and Eddie Earn. They've all played the part in the demise of Kell Brook. You could call it the rise and fall of Kell Brook, but I don't even think he got to the top at Mountain, to be honest, me. I don't think he did. A win over Sean Porter, a squeak by Sean Porter, that ain't climate Mountain for me. And then Joe, Joe, Dan, Kevin Busy, and Frankie Gavin. No, 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 no. So in my opinion, in my opinion, the Kelbrook saga rolls on, but like I've just said to you there, Kelbrook will be punching for pay for many years yet. You just watch. All right? Now, moving on, moving on from Eduardo's little little Kelbrook, little divorce. Moving on. I don't know what's gone on here. I haven't really seen much about it. I've only heard third hand, but 
I'm going to say this. If David A, the haymaker, a.k.a. cost cutter, a.k.a. the whore, if David A and Dylan White have got intense beef, David A will be trying to write a script to get his, to worm his way back in for a few quid. Because he's 40 now, isn't he? And he'll be, he be wanted to come out with all that, well, I want to beat George Foreman's record or I want to... I want to be in mix as one of them that won a belt over 40. Alexander Povetkin's a year older than me. I want to start coming out with all that. David A against Dylan White. Could I see it happen? Yeah. Would casuals get behind it? It's a wet dream to casuals, that, isn't it? It's a wet... It's, it's, a, wet, it's a wet dream, isn't it? It's a wet dream to casuals, that fight. But... Uh, Huh. David A against Dillian White. Intense beef. Is that what it's called, Coogan? Intense meat, or is it laughing laughing lobster or laughing luncheon meat? What about sexy spam? Or, or, or what about funny pheasant? Is that what it is? Or raw beef? How about uh, grilled chicken? Or cheeky nandos? Cheeky nandos? Or apples and pears? I don't know. There's that much Essex crap spoke, isn't there? But do I want to see David A against Dylan White? No, Dylan White's very limited. David A is held together by masking tape, which will snap at any state, any time. So we had the toe gate, didn't we, against Vladimir? Then we had the two pull-outs with Tyson Fury. And I'll never fight again. Then we had Demori and the and the, the Arnold Summit the Cobra, more like the worm, or as Tony Bell you said, the worm. And then we've got the two Tony Bell you fights. So David A he's had a very colourful career, but he keeps writing scripts for himself. So my my porky sense is tingling. And I'm smelling David A making another run for it because these people can't help themselves. They can't help themselves. If there's a few quid to be nicked, these people will nick it. So I don't want to see it. Uh, it is what it is. Dean White, a.k.a. the man with no name. It's like that film, isn't it? Uh, for a few dollars more, isn't it, with Clint Eastwood? The man with no name. <laughs> Dean White's appeared back on IFL, hasn't he? Chatting shit. So, Dean White, come see me. Stop chatting shit about being a big-time gangster. Big-time gangsters don't get visas for America, do they? So, Dean White appears, and the people asking the questions have not once said to him, have you got your birth certificate on you or your passport? <laughs> because they don't say a fucking word. Right. Speaking of people that don't say a word, right? I was speaking to somebody the other day. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say what he said to me. He wants to come on channel, but he works for a fighter and, and uh, a couple of fighters actually. And he's like, "Well, I want to come on, but I don't want to shoot me saying it foot porky." I'm like, "Oh yeah. Well, I'm not gonna mess it up for myself, am I?" Well, let me tell you this. Peter Fury comes on here. Savannah Marshall comes on here. Mark Tibbs comes on here. They all work with Matt Chum. So what are you afraid of? And you know what I'm on about. You know I'm talking about you. Yeah, you. You. So, but you're welcome on here anytime, but don't be frightened. You don't have to be frightened. All right. Don't be frightened of coming on Porky's Corner and Eddie Earn cutting you off, but... This is what I'm talking about in boxing. I'm talking about power. The powerful people in boxing at Border Control, Sky, and then the promoters, right? they're the powerful people. Sky, BT, Warren Earn, Border Control, they, they run boxing, basically. They have done for years. Warren's been at it 40 years. Earns have been at it 33 years. Board have been at it longer. Sky have been at it 30 years, haven't they? 
BT have been at it, I don't know. 10 years it. Bottom line is this. These people run boxing with an iron fist in the UK. They all hammered Terry O'Connor, didn't they? Right. Eddie Earns come out and apologised to Terry O'Connor. Coogan did as well in Eddie's interview yesterday. Joe Gallagher's come out. He's apologised to Adam Smith and Sky. And did he apologise to Eddie Earn? I think he did. Why? Grow some balls. But like I said to you the other day in a video, Eddie Earn's the only game in town for Joe Gallagher. He had to do that, didn't he? He had to do it, didn't he? He went like that, didn't he? Cap in hand. He was like that, one. he? Cap in hand. It's what happens, isn't it? Other people go with begging bowl, don't they? Tesco Joe went there, cap, cap in hand. I felt for Joe Gallagher in that interview because he was squirming, wasn't he? Squirming. Trying to say, well, we're not media trained and I've got fighters and they're like pressure cookers. He kept going on about pressure cookers. Do you remember them that your mum used to have on a Sunday? She'd be cooking Sunday dinner and it'd be going, and then it'd pop off, wouldn't it? Pressure cookers. Joe were going on about pressure cookers and fighters and Liam Smith's a millionaire. Callum Smith's a millionaire. So why are they bitching about money? Joe Gallagher's a mini millionaire. So why is he bitching? Callum Smith's, uh, Callum Johnson's not a millionaire. Natasha Jonas is not a millionaire. They need they need the, what they're entitled to, and I can understand that. Crawler's a millionaire. So they've all done well in that gym. A lot of them have done all right. Macklin never won a world title. He's a millionaire, but he's in media now, isn't he? Point I want to make is that everybody's jostling for position. I've just had a text of somebody there, and he said, it's like 20 lions being hungry. They're the boxers. And Eddie Earn throwing a couple of buffaloes to, to lions, and but not keeping them happy. And then down the line, there's there's still 20 lions, and then they're throwing one buffalo to them. And then they're throwing half a buffalo, and then they all the lions turn on each other. And what you've got now, you've got all these people going round in circles, selling their asses basically and we're all watching it unfold in front of us and it's not nice to see it's not nice to see people on the back retiring and bitching about what other fighters are getting i've seen texts from uh certain fighters having to go at dave allen because he's getting red carpet treatment off eddie Hearn. and he's not got so much as an area belt. In fact, he ain't even got so much as a British Masters belt to his name, has he? But he's wormed his way in with Eddie Anny, so good luck to David. But I can see a lot of people. Well, I have seen somebody sent me a screenshot of some fighters around here tweeting saying that Eddie Earn promised to get him on shows and he hadn't. I feel for that fighter, but that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? That's the nature of the beast. And I'm starting to fear for boxing now because everybody's working the ticket, aren't they? Look at Coldwell. Coldwell, remember what you used to say about Frank Warren, don't you? You remember, don't you, Coldwell? What have you got now? Coldwell's had to go with hat, hasn't he? He's had to get his hat out and go cap in hand to Frank Warren. He's working with Lerone Richards. Can you imagine? Dave Coldwell in the same dressing room as Frank Warren or at a show, at a Frank Warren show, he won't even be able to make eye contact with Frank. He'd have to look down all the time, wouldn't he? Because you know when somebody can't make eye contact with you? For example, you know if you've done something wrong and you've got to be near that person, you can't make eye contact with, you, with them, can you? I see it at, I saw it at a Mick Whale show once. I've seen somebody, I thought, yeah, you're over there, are you? Kept looking down. Big old lump. I'm not going to say we were. He had to look down because I stared straight through him. And Frank will stare straight through Coldwell and he'll look away. I'm doing best for my fighters. He'll give it all that. When you said, there you are, come you're working with Frank Warren. 
I'm doing best for my fighter, Lerone Richards. That's what he'll say. That's only get out he's got on it. But really, Colwell will be broken up inside. He's working with Frank Warren. <laughs> but like I said, whores. That won't be me. Because I, I'm all right. I'm in a good position. But I would say, F off. I don't cut. I don't mince my words. I don't mince my words. That's Dennis Hobson. I, I've, I've had to scrape. Dennis has had to be scraped off ceiling in some meetings with me. Ask Mink Whale, any of them. I am fearless. If we have a, when I were up there, if we had a meeting, I would say what I want and I could see Dennis choking on his words because he's a nice man, Dennis. He never bites. And, and, and I know when I've gone and ranted and raved and gone home, he'll be like, fucking hell. He's, he's got no filter. They say tie and moves bad, don't they? But nobody's ever spoke to Dennis like I spoke to him. Nobody. Ask anybody. Ask Miss Moneypenny, Michelle Taylor. Nobody's spoke to him like I do. Because I'm passionate about boxing, aren't I? I want to see things done. Oh, I want, to, want them to be done, but I'm not as experienced as Dennis. Anna. They always have to think of the pound notes. And what's right is right in boxing, and what's wrong is wrong. But you're going to see a lot of people jostling for a lot of positions now, and it's only going to get worse, and the money is just getting cut down all the time. There's no gate money. So you're going to see some big changes, but like I've just said, Everybody's going to manipulate it for themselves. I've seen Dave Caldwell doing interviews every single day, every day, justifying this, justifying that. Johnny Nelson apologising to Povetkin for saying it's a lucky punch. Let me just turn this off. Apologising to Povetkin because it's a lucky punch. Apologising to Terry O'Connor and Coogan and everybody agreeing. And Terry O'Donnell's a great guy, according to Adam Smith. Adam Smith was saying he were robbed. He robbed he robbed Vasquez the other day. Now he's a great guy and Robert Smith does a great job. These people are up to the eyeballs in it. Up to the eyeballs. But like I said, you've got a hierarchy, haven't you? The board, Sky, BT, Frank and Eddie. That's how it works. Look, if Terry O'Connor's that bad a referee, Eddie, you'll obviously be not you'll obviously be not having him work another match room show ever, ever again, will you? If he's that bad. But you know you're gonna have to do. Because the board are above you. So they call the shots. If people don't come out and say a word at the moment because like that kid who I spoke to over day, or what grown man, grown man. They don't want to mess it up for themselves, do they? And I can understand that. I can understand that. This is why people in boxing industry, they need to have something else going in their lives. It's like me, I wanted to do this. 2011, I might even have a picture somewhere. 2011 on my birthday, Ellaville Hotel, I went to see Cobra. He was in camp for Ward. And he, he said, well, why don't you get yourself in holding box? I said, I don't know how to. I don't know how to. And, and we had a chat. He said, well, get your sense sorted, get your health sorted. And he were right. I went and had a gastric band. November, December, January, February, March, April. And then another year. 18 months later, I had a gastric band. It took me 18 months to get it, to go through with it. And... Managed to get me to worm my way in, didn't I? Into a little position. But the point I want to make is that you've just got to you've just got to go for it, aren't you? In boxing, but you've got to be right. There's too many people arse lickers, isn't there? There's too many people arse lickers. And you can be outspoken like I can be on here. I'm outspoken, aren't I? But I can back it up. Not many can back it up, can they? With statistics and not one person wants to take me on on anything I've ever said on here. I find that strange that nobody wants to take me on. And yeah, I've fallen out with people, but 
Nobody wants to take me on in a debate on here, do they? Only little gimps, little maggots who set channels up and hide behind the camera. I don't want to have debates with them. Who are slagging me off from we we are blank screens. That they're, they're not going to have debates with me. I'm not going to give them time of day. I was going to, and you know who you are, but you're not getting time of day now. I thought about it. So jog, you little maggot, you little gimp. I want about people in the boxing industry. People... They don't want to mess it up for themselves, but they don't come out and say a fucking word because they don't want to ruin their little thing. That mentality has got to stop. It's like Graham Soonis. He's going to say what he thinks about Liverpool, isn't he? Whether they play good or bad. Tony Bellew is not going to say that, is he? About one of his mates that fighting. It's all become too cosy. Back up a little bit to Eddie Earn. I noticed how he were trying to justify not giving Kel Brook the fight because he's got a pot of money that he needs to share out with fighters around here. Using that sort of propaganda is designed to have a dig at Kel and saying that Kel's set up for life and that. Yeah, he is, but... And he's overachieved Kel Brook, I think. But the point I want to make is that Eddie Earn was the one that put him in with Golovkin. And he knew what the outcome would be because fighters are not superheroes. We have weight divisions for a reason. 147 kids that squeak to win against Porter don't fight 160 pound killers. Would you put Lloyd Unigan in with Marvin Agler? Would Mickey Duff do that? No, would he act? Would you put Paulie Malignaggi in with Canelo? No. Would you put Paulie Malignaggi in with Golovkin? No. How come Amir Khan, who started out as a lightweight, even fought Steffi Pull? How come he ended up fighting Canelo, who's just knocked somebody out of light heavyweight? Who's making these decisions? It's designed for money. How knows? Money. For people to make money. That's why these fights are made. But you're going to see a lot more backbiting and a lot more people turning on people. After this weekend show, you'll see people having a go at Dave Allen because he's managed to get his son a six-figure payday against a nobody who's had 22 rounds as a pro, which works out at 44 minutes. 17 of his 19 knockouts out of 19 fights we in first round. So you've got a man here with no amateur experience, 37-year-old in two weeks, with 44 minutes in the ring as a boxer, but we've got no footage of it, and he's £347. Is this the worst ever guy to come over and fight anybody on a pay-per-view? Yeah, I think it is. But the, the, the awful thing about it is he's got a WBA top 15 ranking. So Dave Allen's running about now saying, if I beat this guy, I've gate crashed the world scene. So that's what's wrong with boxing at the moment. That and a few other things, but it's one of them things, isn't it? We have to get behind boxing, but I'm finding it very hard to, and it's very easy to be negative in my head at the moment with boxing because I'm not seeing anything positive. The best two heavyweights in the world are not fighting each other, are they? Tyson Fury has been a pro 12 year. Joshua won Olympic gold in 2012. They're still not fought each other. Will they ever fight each other? I don't know. I hope so, but... Hmm. Hmm. Dylan White knocked a fight back with Joshua at Wembley for four belts. The only heavyweight championship at World. That's all. Four belts and five million minute guarantee, 5.5, what it, on upside? It's hit so many targets. It's not bad, though, if you can get it, is it? But he knocked it back to fight whoever. You know, did he fight Malcolm Tanoff and somebody like that? I forget now, but Rivers or somebody. But what I want to make is he didn't fight him, did he? Because his arsehole fell out because he'd had some fist off Joshua at first time. He thought, well, I'm picking up good money here on pay-per-view. If I fight Joshua, 
and get beat, I might not get on pay-per-view again. Maybe Eddie Hearn were whispering in his ear, telling him, look, if you lose, though, you'll not be pay-per-view, you'll have to work your way up. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes because Eddie's going to manipulate it for himself, isn't he? For example, Eddie tells lies, doesn't he? He's already said, well, you know, I got that wrong with that eight count, but I'm trying to sell the fight, so I believed it myself. Dylan White won up at eight. Look, they're all going to say, they're all going to apologise, aren't they, and say things and then come out and apologise. And you're going to get a lot of people saying, we're not media trained and this and that, but just be real. Be real people. That's all you've got to do. Keep it real and tell the truth. But nobody's going to do that. Either they're going to manipulate it. And it's starting to really, really, really annoy me now. It's even starting to annoy people that are back in my channel. Like what we're involved with here, what what sort of what's going on here, and I can I see where they're coming from. <clears throat> I see where they're coming from. Trinket belts have got to go. Slipping kids and in these rankings, that's got to go as well. That's got to go. People have got to start fighting each other. That's just my opinion, but. Let's have a look. Yeah, we spoke about the apologies and that, haven't we? Pretty embarrassing, really, wasn't it? Uh, no one in media is coming out and saying a word, are they? Not Gareth A. Davis, Bunce. I never had my Buncey, but Bunce is not coming out and saying that. Gareth A. Davis, Ron Lewis. Trish Dixon. None of them are seen a dicky bird, are they? None. Coogan, Umar, none of them. All them YouTubers, they get them on end it up like Rob Tebbett does. When they catch them out, they don't move in for kill, do they? They don't savage them. They, they just sit back and... Because they don't want to ruin it for themselves, do they? They don't want to ruin the press passes or the ringside tickets and it's wrong. It's wrong, but what can you do? So, anyway, I want to get ready. I'm going to office and get some graft done. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep sporting boxing. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. I think all those people that leave comments are fantastic. But before I go, I'm just going to play one of these little videos In fact, now I'll leave it. We'll leave it. I think I'll do it on ne next time I interview. Next time I interview him. We, we, we might put it on then as a bit of a giggle. All right. So, all right. So, thanks for uh, thanks for liking and subscribing and all that. And shout out Innovation Allies. That's about it, really. I'm just going to get me sent to office. So, peace out. <laughs>